Hey ladies and gents, it's his Dwiz. I'm here with Jeremy Gerard at G-Con and he's showing off some of his really cool customs. Um, tell us about this guy here. So that's my Wasteland Ravager. Uh, I actually made that when the Mythic Legion's Wasteland wave was shown. I was actually surprised that we didn't get kind of like a blasted earth mutant type, you know, zombie character. Um, and I love that head. That's the Hagnon head. And I thought it was like a crime that it wasn't painted because the sculpture is so good that you don't you don't really see the full sculpture in the Hagnon figure because the transparent plastic. So my challenge with that figure was to create something using only Mythic Legion's parts to give it three Mythic Legion's weapons just like the, the standard figures have to create something that really could exist for the Wastelands line. Right. I love how how seamless your, your, your figures are and how well they fit in with the up line. Talk about your Mulan Princess. So when the Advent of Decay wave shipped, right around that time I saw a bunch of fan art that took the... Uh, the Disney princesses and reimagine them as warriors. So I thought that was a cool angle. That was something that inspired me because I mean a lot of these characters that Disney uses, they predate Disney, you know, pretty extensively anyway from fairy tales and so forth. Right. So I thought it'd be fun to use these bases as, you know, characters for mythic legions versions of these characters. And that specific one is my version of Mulan, which it's actually just uh, an Artemis silver cord head. I removed the horn piece from it and replaced it with one from the uh, the elf Malachi. Malachi. Yeah, Malachi. Malachi. Um, painted that gold. The only paint that I did on that is actually that little head piece. And then the armor and weapons come from a uh, articulated icon samurai from the Fru series. Yeah. But it all goes together really, really well. And, and as you said, thank you for the compliment. It fits in, I think, really well with existing figures. I always admire how smart and clever you are with this parts reuse. Well, that's what you I know? try to do, you know. And, he, and here's one that's, I think, kind of sort of the epitome uh, of it, where you, your pirate. Talk about your yep. pirate. So that's a custom head from a guy named Matt O'Toole that goes under Castle of Power. Uh -huh. And he's it, he doesn't release his stuff very often. He's on the Facebook cabal group. But uh, I, I was fortunate enough to get a few of his pieces recently. And they're so expressive. He does a lot of dwarves. So expressive that when I got it, I kind of built the figure around him. And I was just swapping different parts, trying to figure out what type of character I wanted to create. And that coat comes from a Pirates of the Caribbean Captain Barbosa figure. Mm -hmm. So as soon as I swapped that on to this, this body, which is from Bromd and Iron Jaw, I said, oh yeah, that head, I couldn't see it as anything but a pirate. So again, I slapped on a few parts, um, looked in my accessory bin, that pipe comes from a really old uh, Lord of the Rings Gimli figure by the Toy Vault Company. And just use those parts to create what I think looks like a really unique character in my display. Yeah, I mean, I, I imagine he just came to life and he's just sort of fully formed with so much... You know, you could. It's like he has. He's alive. You know, he's got a backstory. Yep. Talk, talk about your Anubis. I know that's rather popular. Yeah, that's probably one of the more the most popular ones I've posted. So this is. Um, it was released by My Action Figure Customs. It's uh, by a 3D artist called Sebadam that did the sculpt, and they released it and they called it Anubis Corrupted or something like uh -huh. that. Um, I already have an Anubis from the old Gothtropolis line, right. so I didn't need an Anubis, but I saw it as a possible to use it to make the character of a set, another Egyptian god-inspired character. Uh -huh. So that's what I did here, and I just kind of had fun doing a lot of metallics on that. Um, because the facial structure of the sculpture has that skeletal look, I did some dry brushing to really bring out that, that skull and that like musculature that's kind of hanging off there. Um, and again, give it some give it some fun colors. The body on that is actually from a Torian, so the body already was black. So I didn't have to do any paints there, and I could really just focus on the weapons and the head and the chest piece, all of which do come from my action figure customs. All right, and Voodoo Pris Princess, maybe we could like that. Yeah, let's want to bring her forward. Yeah, bring her forward. So that's another one of my Disney-inspired characters. That was my version of uh, Tiana, Princess of the Frogs. So anyone who's seen this movie, The, the Princess and the Frog, there's, there's like a, the bad guy's like a voodoo priest kind of person. So I thought it would be fun to combine the character 
of Tiana, who's the, the heroine of the movie, with the bad guy, and, and to do this voodoo priestess-inspired character. Um, and it's really just, it's a Hera Serpent Spire from right. Advent of Decay. She already had that voodoo kind of vibe going on already. Right. So just making some small changes, like swapping out her hair for the one from Queen Urxa, the orc. Um, adding that skull face paint and some small accessories allowed me to create this kind of like voodoo queen looking character. Yeah, so that's genius. And the skirt you said was from uh, a Lord of the Rings. Yeah, the skirt and cape. I wanted something that looked kind of ratty, like it's been in the swamps for a while. That yeah. came from a Lord of the Rings figure called Galadriel Entranced. And it was like a transparent blue type plastic. It's the scene from Lord of the Rings when she kind of gets possessed by the, the, the allure of the ring. Right. And so I just painted that, the browns, to match the rest of the, the figure. And, you know, I had what I needed. Cool. Very, very imaginative. And uh, can I bring Boba Fett? Yeah, yeah, bring him. All right. So this is another inspired figure. Um, this one started, uh, for those of you who have been into the line for a while... The on the message boards when they do the fan exclusives when they do the voting they had for the first Kickstarter wave the original Mythic Legions 1 wave um, Ed had done a bunch of line art of the different pieces so people could see what they were voting on and what was going together and because the line art was uncolored a bunch of people started using like Photoshop to to color it certain ways so they could uh, imagine you know what they, they thought the vote should have done and someone had some fun with it and they made like a Boba Fett inspired design and at the time I thought hey that's kind of cool I should do that um, and that's what this came out of. I had a, this actually started as a Black Knight Legion Builder. And I just dry brushed it with a bunch of different colors, gave it the accessories I wanted him to have. And I tried to create something that was obviously Boba Fett, but fit within the Mythic Legion's realm. So like, yeah. for instance, you know the character of Boba Fett, he has the jetpack with the missile right, coming right. up. That's why I put that sword there. Because that ah. sword reflects to me that missile coming up on the Boba Fett design, yet it doesn't look out of place to have this. And, and, and so the cape, yeah, you did that yep. with the cape yep. as well. I got the cape as well. I've got the Wookiee braids there. You know, every, I tried to really look at the, the shin tools. I tried to look at the character of Boba Fett and the, the iconic things on the, the Boba Fett armor. Like on the Boba Fett armor, right. he's got that, that Mandalorian skull you know, kind of painted onto his soldier arm, so, uh, shoulder armor. So that's what I did here, where I actually used one of the skulls from a Goblin Legion Builder axe, added some horns to it to kind of recreate that skull as part of the design. Yeah, that's really exquisite, exquisite work. And of course, as Real soon as subtle. I was done him, and, uh, I said, oh, now I have to make the other five bounty hunters. So I went ahead and I did IG-88 and Bosk and, you know, Forlom, Zuckus, and Dengar. And, and so we, where can people find you so they can see all these other So things. my Instagram is where I post everything initially. That is uh, at Mythic Customs. But I also repost everything both in the Mythic Legions Cabal Facebook group and on my website, MythicCustoms.com. And if you dig these and you actually want to try to maybe recreate them, on my website, mythiccustoms.com I share all of the recipes and I've been kind of um, you know pumping Jeremy for information <laughs> um, and trying to get his secrets because I just want to know how he can come up with so many amazing customs and uh, you know I think you said you did like a, a year's worth where you did a reveal every day yeah so <laughs> I started posting on Instagram last May May of 2018 and I actually haven't missed a day since. And I don't know if anybody's ever tried to do something like that every day, but I, that's practically impossible. I just, so I he's post, either yeah. Superman, he's a mad scientist, he's cloned himself, he sold the soul to the devil, or maybe it's that tattoo of Ezra Ramirez on his leg that, that imbued be him with like special powers. That must be it. That, that has given me the power <laughs> to, uh, to keep creating these. Well, as I told you earlier, I do a couple at a time so right. I can try to to keep up with this but I mean make no mistake it's not easy it takes a it takes some dedication to be able to keep creating them and keep posting them but that's I get a lot of great feedback and that's that's why I do it and and we, we really appreciate it I mean they capture our imagination and this is obviously a, a goblin yep um, goblins are probably my favorite and uh you know, this was one where I, I liked the idea of making a goblin tinker, but I wanted to do something. Right. I didn't just want to give him like a wrench and stuff. I right. wanted to do something fun. So Zevo's wings and a uh, 
what did you say, Gonzo uh, yeah. Palisades yeah, Muppet the, helmet? Uh, yeah, the, the flight helmet, the aviator helmet, comes from a Muppets, uh, Palisades Muppets Gonzo figure. And what I did was, that's a, the head on that is from a Mythic Legion snag goblin. I pulled off Snag's head. I did have to trim down the top of the head a little bit with just a razor blade so I could get the helmet to pop on, but just a dab of glue and now he's got this little aviator helmet and the, right. the jetpack is just kind of in there. There's another plastic uh, kind of strap piece on him and it's just attached to that. Right, all right. And then he's got this uh, this panther here. We're gonna kind of cut it short because I'm this video is getting long, but... Um, no, it's just uh, a standard Black Panther. I just painted a uh, Kyle Rose head to be black to make like a Black Panther character. Yeah, and that's um, awesome reuse of those parts from Stan Winston's Realm of the Claw. I love that, but they didn't have a lot of articulation. No, so. they didn't. Uh, and then here's the newest one, which is a, you said Frost Goblin? Yep, Frost Goblin. I made a little side group of goblins called Frost Goblins, painted their skin blue, and this can, is... Can I take the helmet yeah, off? Sure, or? sure. Okay. So this is my Frost Goblin rider. Awesome. All right, I can't think of a better way to, to uh, finish this video up than with your newest reveal. Um, congratulations, Thanks, and uh, you know, I'm a huge, huge fan.